Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When I am talking about this concept, I'm of course talking about the realities of the world that money fuels the world. And as a part of that, we are trained from early childhood to take our spiritual gifts, take our leadership gifts, take our practical gifts that God has gifted us and start to facilitate them, start to improve them, start to streamline them, and start to, well, grow them. And when we do that, we then usually produce into the world after high school a concept of our profession, of a concept of our industry, and what we're going to do for the rest of our life, in our career life, if you will, that's going to produce for us our life. What I talk about is making a life worth living, which means you have to decide where you want to live when you leave college and try and plant yourself there in some sort of business, some sort of employment. At the same time, you have to think about how many hours a week you want to work. And you have to decide, am I going to be a 40-hour-a-week guy, a 60-hour-a-week guy, or a 20-hour-a-week guy, and making the same kind of living to provide for your life and your home and your car and your food and all the entertainment and things you want to do to place your star somewhere in life. When we do this, we also have to career plan for the long term. Is what I'm studying in college actually going to produce for me a true job with a real salary that will go on for a long time? Or is it going to create for me struggle in my life where I'll end up in retail, which isn't bad, but it's a different kind of life. Retail life is a lot of work on your feet. It's a lot of work doing a lot of movement of a lot of product and meeting a lot of people, a lot of different people. And there are people who are great and love that life. I've met several and they've gone from working from box stores to retail uh, fashion outlets and other things and they love that life. But your life has to be decided by you. And if you don't start thinking about the practicality and the strategic aspect of how things roll into the next, you might get stuck in a career that at some point you're like, I am out of here. I'm done with this. I can't handle this. There was a time when I advised a young woman who was making a career shift. She was later in life, maybe in her 40s. I had met through business. She was in my business forum. And she literally hired me to do with her a marketing project, a business strategizing event, if you will. We spent several weeks together preparing to market her new business. What she did was went through the whole plan and then a short time later decided she didn't want to do that business anymore. And the funny thing about it was she expected to come back to me and ask me for money back from her program. like, no. I provided my service. Why would I do that? Now, I'm talking to you about the ridiculousness of some concepts of illness. That because I don't want to do this anymore, that I'm no longer liable for what I did with you in preparation for it. But what you have to decide when you're looking at your career, when you're looking at your studies in school, and the investment that you and your parents, we presume, probably predominantly your parents if you're at a fancy school, are making in your future. Are you choosing the right career path? There are certain careers and certain study programs that are marvelous for the sideline electives that we take in school, but they do not produce any form of actual business opportunity in life. They don't produce one job or career that really has an extended life. You have to really look at that. You might be a science major, but what specifically are you becoming a master of? You might be an engineer, but what is your greatest gift within that career? And where are you going to find that job for the rest of your life? Now, those are good quality programs, and they do usually provide long-term income if you have good so enough social skills to do this. But here's our challenge. We're living in a time of COVID. A lot of kids are sort of sad and depressed because they're not getting a lot of socialization in their classes. But here's the crazy thing. The minute they get offline from their classes, and you wonder what the hell do we have universities and why do we have classrooms if we're not going to go to class, during a time of COVID or epidemic, I mean, get the fuck over it. You might die, you might not die, you never really know. But my point is, they're going to bars, taking off their masks, and they're drinking with their buddies and getting totally plastered in bars that have no food at all. So we got people literally falling down in the streets, barfing in the sidelines in the grasses, thank God, and, not, and sometimes on the sidewalks, because we don't have an adjustment of life. Now, I'm just telling you the observations of spending a little time on a campus, and I don't plan to stay here much longer, but I know that people who I talk to are sort of rethinking their life. That when they come up to me and they say, hey, I want to help you, and then I say, great, let me give you some advice and some cons cons consult, consult, because that's what I do. I'm a consultant. I consult a lot of different type of people in a lot of different industries, and when I do it, I make a study of that particular group and that particular option and that particular life. But what I'm talking about is life is what I do for a living is between me and the Lord. And how many different ways I get income through my life is between me and God, and it's none of your business. But the truth is that in your life and in your business and in your employment, you've got to have a career that will give you longevity and everything all year long.